Shalom. All thanks and praises unto our power. Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Wabrakakwadash. Peace, blessings, much respect to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. On down to the rest of the elders who rule well within Israel. Salutations to the hopeful elect throughout the four corners of this whole entire earth. No matter where, whom they may be or what they may look like. Pushing out this purified truth to the rest of the church who believe as well. You men who may not be teachers or prophets. You women, sons and daughters also. The water to Yahweh Shai because without him enduring and going to that cross for the nation of Israel and the nation of Israel alone, none of this would even be possible whatsoever. Now, this is the book of Ecclesiasticus, also known as the book of Sirach, chapter 1 and verse 20. The root of wisdom is to fear the Lord, and the branches thereof are long life. So the root of wisdom, okay, and when you look at the root of something, that goes even deeper than the foundation. The root is literally the anchor of any tree or plant. Okay, if you uproot something, you totally annihilate it. It's done for. It. Okay, the root of wisdom is to fear the Lord. So to fear the Lord is highly important. That is the anchor of our faith. Okay, as important as a root is to a plant, that's how we should have fear towards the Lord. Okay, and a root, it absorbs different nutrients for whatever plant or tree for it to grow or for it to even reproduce. So the root of something is very, very important. The source of a plant is its root. All right. So the root of wisdom is to fear the Lord, not say, oh, I love the Lord. Because if you love the Lord, you would fear the Lord. Okay? Because to love the Lord, you would show it by action. And you would try not to offend, but rather offend less. The root of wisdom is to fear the Lord. And the branches thereof are long life. So let's go forward. Ecclesiasticus, also known as the book of Sirach. Chapter 19 and verse 18. The fear of the Lord is the first step, is the first step to be accepted of him, and wisdom obtaineth his love. So the fear of the Lord, that is key. That is foundation. In fact, that is the root of our essence in this faith, is the fear of the Lord. To fear Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. That's what keeps us in our right mind that's what draws us away from wickedness that's what draws us away from being enticed by our fleshly desires because our minds naturally are wicked but the fear of the Lord should override whatever wicked thoughts come into your mind to where it's like no I'm not doing that that's against the Lord no I wouldn't like that happening to me I'm not doing that you know, that's wickedness. Well, that comes from the fear of the Lord. Through that fear, it keeps you guarded from falling away. Because you know, the Lord is not a joke. He is not a power to play with. You should not play with fire. Yahweh is a consuming fire and he's a jealous fire. Okay. Now, let's read this again. Ecclesiasticus 19 and 20. The fear of the Lord is all wisdom. So you want to know all wisdom? Fear the Lord. And through your fear in the Lord, that's what's going to keep you. That's what's going to keep me. That's what's going to keep us with clean hands so that we can grow stronger and stronger and increase and just get better and better. And in all wisdom is the performance of the law and the knowledge of his omnipotency. All right. Let's go forward to Proverbs. Chapter 10 and 27. The fear of the Lord prolongeth days. 
but the years of the wicked shall be shortened. So how does the fear of the Lord prolong days? And why would the years of the wicked be shortened? Well, it's easy. The wicked don't fear the Lord. Fearing Lord prolongs your days. And the reason why fearing the Lord prolongs your days is, it, is because it keeps you from getting on the Lord's bad side to where now he may either have to chasten somebody or even just put them to death. So we want things to go well with ourselves. If we want our days to be prolonged, how do we do that? We do that by fleeing away from sin. We do that by fearing the Lord because it's the fear of the Lord that allows us to see through all the darkness and say, you know what? That ain't for me. I'm not with that. It's not worth punishment. It's not worth offending Yahweh by Shem Shai because I know a punishment will come if I break this law or if I do that, if I go pop this man's wife, right? If I go over here and, and decide to be a drug dealer or I want to be a pimp and sell women to, to you, know, you know, add extra money to my pocket. These things are going to get you put to death because if you feared the Lord, you wouldn't do those things. It's the fear of the Lord that prolongs our days, not being wicked and proud because a proud man is not daunted with fear. The fear of the Lord prolongeth days, but the years of the wicked shall be shortened. And that's why Esau is having a great fall right now as we speak, because they don't fear the Lord. Now let's go forward to Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 6. By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. And by the fear of the Lord, Yahweh, men depart from evil. So that's how we prolong our days, is departing from evil. Not following after the wicked multitude to do, to do evil, because the scriptures tell us not to do that. Let's get that. Exodus 23 and 2. Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil. Neither shalt thou speak in a cause to decline after many to rest judgment. So we're not supposed to follow the evil multitude. What does that mean? That means most people are wicked. Most people are not right. Most people are not operating in the correct spirit, in the correct mentality. A lot of people are just gone. But seeing that most people are gone, we're not supposed to, uh, if you can't beat them, join them type attitude. We're supposed to be separate regardless. Okay? Now let's jump back to Proverbs 16 and verse 6. By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. And by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. So the wicked multitude, they don't fear the Lord. That's why they're not departing from evil. And they're playing a very dangerous game. But for those of us who fear Yahweh by Shem Shai, we're doing our best to offend less and not get on his bad side, man. That's not good at all whatsoever man the lord can bring our worst nightmares man the lord can bring things upon us we didn't even know could even happen to a person we have to fear him fear yahweh by shami shai okay you have men they've you know casted off this truth for their woman just for their woman to leave for another man or ended up getting a train ran on her right you have men who have left this truth because they chose a job over this truth just to get fired by their boss, okay? You have men who have literally set aside the fear of the Lord and put their worldly desires in the forefront just for the Lord to knock all that shit down, all right? But anyway, let's go to Romans 6 and 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of the power is eternal life through Yahweh Shai Mashiach, our Lord. So we understand that the wages of sin is death. So if we fear the Lord, that's what will cause us to sin less. Because to keep on sinning, to keep living filthy, to keep living in darkness, 
ultimately things are not going to go well. Eventually judgment will have to come. But if we want our days to be prolonged, we want things to go well for us, we have to turn away from our sins. And that comes from what? Having a fear in the Lord, knowing that there are consequences to our actions. There are men who are given a prize for their wickedness, and there are men who are given a prize for their righteousness. And we are hoping to be given a reward for our righteousness. Okay? So we understand sin leads to death. That's why uh, a fear in the Lord, a healthy fear in the Lord is good for us because it keeps us from sinning. Because we know he's not playing those games. He's not taking no shorts, no losses. Now let's go to 1 John chapter 5 and verse 16. If any man see his brother sin a sin which is not unto death, he shall ask and he shall give him life. For them that sin not unto death. There is a sin unto death, I do not say that he shall pray for it. Now this world will tell you all sin is the same. All sin is not the same. Not all sins are worthy of death. There is a huge difference between a man who's committing adultery, right? And a man who's wearing mixed fabric because of the captivity he's in. There's a huge difference between a man who's calling on a false god, okay? And then a man who, what would be a good example? A man who's calling on a false god or a man who's not that versed in the scriptures. A man who's not on point as another man when it comes to bringing out scriptures. But what's worse? Being an idolater or not being well versed in the scriptures? I mean, the answer is easy. Now, that wasn't a good example, but the point is... All things are not equal. All things are not on the same level. So when it comes to wickedness, not all sin is on the same level. There's a big difference between a sodomite and someone who accidentally ate some pork juice that came on their cheese pizza. There's a big difference, man. Okay? So... A lot of people try to, you know, literally mingle and mix up all sin, like whether you're a sodomite or whether you offend in a different matter. It's all the same. No, it's not all the same. Not all sin is worthy of death. But when it comes to sins that are worthy of death, we're not supposed to pray for men who are doing those things. If a man is a sodomite in this ministry, you don't pray for that man. If a man is an adulterer in this ministry, you don't pray for that man. A man behind the scenes is trying to get other men to worship an idol, to, to serve a false god, a false god. You don't pray for that man. There are sins that you don't pray for. And there are sins that you do. But nevertheless, the fear of the Lord is what keeps us from trying to not sin whatsoever. And it's impossible to do. We're going to go off. And it, and it affects us. It bothers us that we go off. Verse 17. All unrighteousness and is sin. And there is a sin not unto death. So we understand that sin leads to death. Sin is the wages of death. But not all sin leads to death. We are all sinners. But we are not all on the same level of sinning. Okay. And that's what the fear of the Lord does. It separates us from everybody else. All right. Most people, they're doing sins unto death. A lot of us in the truth, we are sinning, but we're not doing sins unto death. Not intentionally, not to our knowledge. Okay. Not if we have any control over it. All right. Luke chapter 14 and 23. And the Lord said unto the servant, go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. So when it says to compel them, we're basically forcing our people through the word to repent, turn back to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. And we talk in such a manner because you're supposed to fear him. 
it is a very serious matter to know you are to fear the Lord. That's why we don't come in this soft guy spirit. We don't come in the spirit of an R&B singer. We come in the spirit of real men. We come in the spirit of austere men. Because these are very austere measures that we're speaking on. And when we tell our people about the scriptures and we're going into different things, we're crying our heart out. We're serious. And we might come off rough. We might come off and offend some. But we're compelling you. Let's go into that word compel. The word compel. The word is an ankazo. To necessitate, compel, drive to, constrain. By force, threats, etc. And we'll say things like, hey, the Lord's going to destroy America. The Lord's going to destroy you, your family, such and such if you don't repent. Right? We, we speak hostily. Okay, we speak with force because the force is behind us by permission, entreaties, etc. By other means, compel, constrain. So when we compel our people, we're forcing or threatening them through the words of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shah. Because you have to fear him. The Lord is looking for fear. Luke 14 and 23. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. And that's what we do. We compel our people. We're forcefully telling our people, you better repent or you are going to die. And then somebody will say, well, that's not how the Lord will want you to speak. Well, then you don't know the spirit of the Lord and you don't know the spirit that his servants come in. So the point being, we have to fear Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai seeing that's what prolongs our days. That's the first step. That's the root um, of our essence of being in this truth is to fear Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. And seeing that sin leads to death, although not all sin leads to death, we do our best to sin less, offend less because of the fear that we have within us, which we cannot let that go. So Lord willingness was simple and edifying. All praises to Yahweh. Baha Shum Yahweh Shai, Baha Shum Wawakakwada Shalom.